how serious I am when I say that I almost fainted <laughs> when uh, when he knocked out Justin. Is he is he is he is he being serious here? Is he actually saying that? Oh my god! He was at a UFC event, lads, and. Uh... <laughs> Is he actually saying that? He went to UFC 300, Jesse on fire of all people, and I, I can't, I, I can't take him seriously. So he went to 300. He was there. He, everyone's cheering, having a beer, getting it on. He's there. Oh, I nearly fainted. <laughs> I nearly fainted because because Max Max was so good. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Idiot. Here's to the fighters, the fans on the game. Here's to the blood, sweat, and tears on the fame. And here's to Az and Key, you're ready to go on the brutally honest MMA show. Okay, we're back with another Jesse Young fire breakdown. And he's just. I can make content for days on this guy. It's just. It's ridiculous. And I've been hearing you guys, everyone's coming at me saying, what about this and what about this about Jesse on fire? He's lying about this. He's got a massive ego. I'm listening, guys. If you've got anything on Jesse on fire, anything that you want me to cover, pop it in the fucking comments. If you're a bummer, then go bum on fucking Jesse on fire's channel. Not here. Not fucking here. Don't come in my comments. Anyway, if you're wondering about the Tash, we had a, we had a bit of a... <sighs> It was the live on UFC 300. I, I made an agreement with chat. I said, for every pick that I get wrong, we'll shave it a portion of the tash. And now I'm full Dagestani. I'm full Dagestani. Anyway, over to Jesse on fire. Okay, let's get straight into it. So after UFC 300, Jesse on fire went live and he gave his thoughts on the 300 card and some more. So we're going to get straight into it and cover this now. Let's go. What's up, everybody? So... I would say, uh, is he chewing his face off? Is he chewing his face off? And by chewing his face off, if you know, you know. Uh, pretty, uh, he looks fucking wired now, given that, uh, how everything played out last night. That's why I want to do this video and talk about, uh, talk about what's coming next now. Tell us, Jesse, tell us what's coming next, my man. Because now the table's set in the way that Dana and Hunter and all of them literally planned months and months and months and months and months ago except it's the absolute best case scenario going into the next phase this is all that they can ever do is is set up the fights with the intended outcome where like if this person wins and this person wins then this happens <laughs> is he mansplaining is he mansplaining how fights are made Fucking hell. this guy, this fucking guy is mansplaining to the entire MMA community. Our, our matchmaking's done. So if you if you put this guy against this guy, and then if this guy wins, then you might match him up with this guy. Fucking hell. Yeah, he's man he's he's mansplaining. So a lot of times, if this person spoils it and beats this guy. Oh, yeah, what what do you do if that fighter spoils the, the the fucking card? What what do you do if he he spoils the rankings by beating someone he shouldn't? Ooh, I wonder what. If, tell us, Jesse. They kind of take a fair amount of the star power from the guy they beat, or whatever. Oh really? Oh really? Oh, they, they take some of the star power. Well, not not if you're some fighters like Ian Gary, you know, Bal Al Mohammed. Certain fighters they just never go and get anyone or anyone's clout. They just, no matter who they fucking beat. Anyway, continue. Continue. And so right now, the UFC has the table set to make one of the biggest fights in history. Uh, and we're going to talk about that. But I want to talk more. About, I want to talk about UFC 300 first because uh, I went on super quick last night to talk about it. And it was like 3 in the morning or something. Or I don't know what time it was. Very fucking late. And Ooh. my brain was non-functional. Uh, when, when is his brain actually functional? Can someone please tell me? Because... There's not a video that I've seen yet where he's had any kind of functionality in that brain of his. But maybe maybe it's less functional at 3 a.m. in the morning. Let's go. That time. But um dude. I I literally I'm gonna I, I just uh was emailing myself a video. Uh <laughs> 
<laughs> when Jesse, when Jesse on fire's up past three a.m., he starts he starts sending emails to himself. That's the, the ego on this guy. <laughs> How are you doing, Jesse? Oh, I'm fucking great, Jesse. Of, like uh, of of when Max knocked out Justin. So the the video is awful, dude. Our cameras were like not working in there last night. Oh god. Now, like I, like I couldn't fix it. Like it's like I'm not, I thought my camera was. He's, he's subsequently gone on a side quest and started having a conversation with someone else now. Well, I not his audience. You know, his his live crowd that he's got there. He's, he's gone on a side quest. Completely, you know. Well, he's, I used yours. And it was almost as bad. Gone off track. So the videos suck balls, but <laughs> you can you'll hear in the background, like because you know I'm filming it. I legitimately almost bit the dust, man. Like I, I, I can't even explain to you. Not sure what those. Uh... <laughs> I need. I need. To, can, can you see it? <laughs> those mannerisms. I almost bit the dust. <laughs> They're so camp. Like look at. <laughs> it's proper camp, isn't he? Anyway, how serious I am when I say that I almost fainted <laughs> when uh, when he knocked out just is, is he is he is he being serious here? Is he actually saying that? Oh my god! He was at a UFC event, lads, and uh... <laughs> is he actually saying that? He went to UFC 300, Jesse on fire of all people, and I, I can't. I... <laughs> I can't take him seriously. So he went to 300. He was there. He, everyone's cheering, having a beer, getting it on. He's there. Oh, I nearly fainted. <laughs> I nearly fainted because because Max Max was so good. <laughs> Fuck off, <laughs> idiot. He need he needs to be. He shouldn't he shouldn't be. Look look at the the, the Ant Man. Anyway, he, oh. <laughs> He shouldn't be. He shouldn't be at a UFC event, should he? He should be going to see, I don't know, uh, the Soleil, Michael Jackson, or something. So something, something like that. He, sh he shouldn't be there. He shouldn't be at the three hundred. He's night, but... he's robbed someone of a seat, Auntie. He's robbed someone of a seat. He's there fainting with, uh, I don't know, exhaustion or, or oh, that was that was that was too much for me, Gab. <laughs> Anyway, I, I screamed so loud that I like was not aware <laughs> of like how much you know oxygen I'm using, and I mean I lit and I was like, whoa, those hand yeah. movements, man. I don't know how much hand oxygen I used, and I nearly just fainted. <laughs> was the most bananas moment of all time. And I've thought about. Uh, about this like you know last night and this morning i think the uh <laughs> he's using too much I brain power it's fair to say that that was maybe the greatest moment in ufc history the only one that i could come up with and, and really and I'm, I'm what i'm talking about not like greatest moment but i'm here we go jesse's greatest moments in... <laughs> jesse's greatest moments I'm I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued, and we'll, we'll get on to the next bit in a, in a moment. Anyway, let, let's see what his greatest moment was. We're talking about being in the building and having something happen where people lose their fucking minds because we were there when Kamaru got head kicked by Leon. We were there. When, oh. um we were there when Izzy, we were... Okay, right, I see what he's done there. I see what he's done there. He's not talking about greatest UFC moments. He's talking about the greatest UFC moments where he was in the building and he can brag and he can ego boast and he can say, all you are too poor to go to UFC events, but me, Jesse on fire, I'm the guy that goes to all the big events, all the big pay-per-views. I got to see all the greatest moments. Me, 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 me fucking me. Oh, fucking hell. And, and I know I look like a fucking idiot right now. I've got no tash because it's been shaved off. And I'm wearing a papaka. So, uh, yeah, I, I understand that I look absolutely fucking redonkulous. But 
I'm still not him. And I'm so grateful to the fucking Lord Almighty, or whoever the fucking, whoever the fuck you pray to. Like, I'm so thankful I'm not this guy. Like, I don't care. You can you can go to all the UFC events. You can stay in uh, fucking Vegas as many times as you want. I don't give a fuck what car he drives. At least I'm not that guy. You know. Anyway. Ten feet away when Izzy knocked Let's out get back to in it. Miami. Let's get back to him bragging about all the things that Jesse on fire's seen and been to. All the greatest UFC. That's what he meant to say. Not the the greatest UFC moments. The greatest UFC moments that Jesse on fire has witnessed and you haven't. Like, let's get that clear. And so I'm, you know, it's like, just like I'm. I'm not talking about fight. I'm talking like a moment like that where something insane happens and the whole insane. place goes bananas. And. Uh, I would say the Izzy knockout against Pereira was obviously a really big one of those. Of course, when Leon head kicked Camaro, for sure one of those. I mean, but, is, he, is he only naming like fights in the last 12 months or something, or in the last like couple of years? Like, what about the, you know, the fucking entire history? There's been over 300 pay-per-views and he can only name fights in the last like, what, 12, 24 months or whatever it is. What the fuck, Jesse on fire? When I tell you the Max one over Gaethje... I mean, I'm pretty sure he would have been alive for UFC 1, wouldn't he? Like, he would have been a full-grown fucking adult at that point. So, he should remember that. Pro probably but wasn't a fan so until about a different 36 months ago. I like, I, the, Connery, I, I couldn't exaggerate how much bigger that was than the other ones. And I can tell you exactly why. Little fish, it's big like, fish, cardboard box. Little fish, big fish, cardboard box. The right, Leon right, one was right, so right. nuts because everyone was like lulled to sleep like that fight was <laughs> boring up until that moment like Camaro just enveloped Leon and just broke him it looked like right he just looked like he just took the wind and soul right out of him and so everyone was basically like oh my god you know sweet main event man like can we get this thing done we got shit to do and then bam and then the whole world changed I mean, it pro proper undersells that fight. I mean, if you're not a fucking moron like Jesse on fire and you actually enjoy fighting, you, you would have enjoyed that fight. He's there. He's gone to an event, an event that no one else can go but Jesse on fire because his ego is that big. And that's what he truly, I honestly think that's what he believes. And he's there. He, he's thinking about other things because he's not a fight fan. He's thinking, whoa, I could be getting on with my fucking shopping. I could be doing... I could be doing anything but this right now. So I'm not really that. I've tuned out of the main events. Unless something amazing happens, like, you know, mind-boggling amazing, then <clears throat> Mr. Jesse on fire isn't interested because is, is he a fight fan, really? I, I am beginning to wonder, and I think a lot of the MMA community are beginning to wonder if this guy is a fight fan or is he just a, a drama queen that kind of... He's an influencer that found MMA as a, a way to sort of get into the influencing scene. And there's a lot of those guys about. There's a lot of those guys about. He might turn up to some of the big pay-per-views, but he's not, he's not there for it, is he? Anyway, we we, we we will continue. Not not too much longer, though. And the place went bananas. So bananas. So unexpected. So unexpected. The Izzy and Pereira one, it's like knowing the stakes of that fight, knowing the fact that Izzy had lost to him three times and he was like, he still just keeps on coming back. He like won't accept defeat. Come back, come back, come back. He gets up against the fence. Everyone knows. They're like, do not let your back end up against the fence. That's the, that's the, you know, stylistically circle, circle, circle. Do not run out of room that you can move back. <laughs> do not, do not. Back up against the cage. <laughs> Those hand movements, man. <laughs> the amazing. <laughs> I could make a video just <laughs> just on the the fucking hand <laughs> the hand mannerisms, man. Fucking hell. He's going to do exactly what he did last time. He ends up against the fence. Anybody who has a trained eye is literally going, "Oh fuck," you know. What is Jesse on fire? Got a trained eye? Has anyone got? Has anyone but Jesse got a trained eye? Probably not, because once again he's trying to exclude the audience and tell you that you don't know shit about MMA. I do, because once a guy gets his back against the cage, that is game over. 
Now, that's not always necessarily the case, is it? It's not always necessarily the case. There's a lot of guys that do fight well off the back of the uh, the cage. Anderson Silva being one of those guys, a few of those guys, and they can see a clout, and they can use the cage for many other things, depending on your style. So it's not a one-size-fits-all. That's why it's called MMA. Also, some guys use the cage to launch off and use a Superman punch. It's not always ideal being backed up against the cage, but it's not the end of the world like fucking Jesse on fire is trying to make out here. Um, certainly not. Certainly not. What are you doing? This is the only place you can't be. And he was playing possum against a guy whose punching power is 50% heavier than Francis Ngannou. He put himself in a position. He, who knows better how how hard uh, Pereira punches than Israel Adesanya who's fought him three times. He put himself, he, he played human punching. You know what, right. Uh, there's only so much of... <laughs> Let's get on big screen. So there's actually only so much of uh, watching this guy I can take at once. So we, we, we're just we're just covering bits at a time before my, my brain melts. Anyway, the, the real reason why I was making this video is because he's chosen to ignore my first video. So I'm going to keep making videos until he either content strikes me or <laughs> please don't content strike me. It's all in the name of love and war or whatever they call it. I'd go for a beer with him and I'd tell him all this to his face because some people just need to know that sometimes you're a fucking idiot and you just need to stop being an egomaniac and bragging about all the things that you can do and other people can't and treating other people like they don't have any right to say certain things in MMA. He all, he's, he's very condescending in a lot of his videos and I don't watch that many videos. So there's only very few videos I've seen and I, I re rarely make it part part way through i make five ten mates usually and i haven't seen that many videos but there, I, there's enough to know i've watched enough to know who this guy is and i think i'm pretty spot on anyway that's it for today we might cover some more we might cover some more jesse on fire please like subscribe and if you've got anything to say about jesse on fire or anything that you want me, me to cover drop it in the comments thanks for joining see you in a bit